Hello, everyone. I'm Gloria Wilson, and I live in the Central Valley of Northern California in the United States. And this is my story. I was scheduled to have a fibroid tumor removed from my uterus. I asked my doctor if I could have robotic surgery, which meant minimal downtime and I could get back to work in two weeks. My doctor informed me that he would speak to his panel, get his panel together. He gave me a surgery date and I was prepared to have this foreign matter that had taken up residence in my uterus for more than 20 years removed. I was once told that if it did not bother me, don't bother it. So I didn't. I never experienced excruciating pain or heavy bleeding. In August, 2016, I was so excited I was about to have surgery and return to work fast, sooner than later. One week before the surgery date, my doctor called and informed me that the only female physician on the panel recommended that because the fibroid was the size of a grapefruit and caused my uterus to protrude, I should have first a biopsy and regular surgery, not robotic. I said to the doctor, that's fine. At this point, I just want the tumor removed. So he asked me to come in for the biopsy and that he would contact me with the results. Three days later, the doctor called and he said, Gloria, I have good news and I have bad news. Which do you want first? I said, doctor, give me the bad news first so we could end on a good note. He said, Gloria, you have uterine cancer. I was not expecting that. At that very moment, everything around me was completely silent. It was as if everything in the world just stopped. When I found my voice, I said, what does that mean? It meant I would have a new doctor, a new surgery team, and a new surgery date. Within a month, I had a total hysterectomy, followed by seven chemotherapy treatments, and four radiation treatments. I was in remission for 14 months and cancer returned. I had another surgery, five more chemotherapy treatments and 12 weeks of radiation every day for 10 minutes. So much for a short time off. You see, I had made it my decision that it was more important to me to get back to work fast because my boss needed me. He never said that. In fact, he said, take care of yourself and let me know if there is anything I can do for you. Why is self-care so hard for women? Even through major life changes of our own, we are always looking out for someone else. We put ourselves last. We cause ourselves immense stress when in fact we should give ourselves more me time. Because the tumor had caused my uterus to protrude so far, one of my doctors said I looked like I was in my third trimester of pregnancy. I wore a size 10 in pants when typically I wore size six. I bought extra large blouses and dresses. I did not have time over the years to stop and care for myself, to have the surgery. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, I would not have had cancer because my uterus could have been removed years ago, but I didn't have time. During my treatments, 
I had a female cousin-in-law and a very close girlfriend who both were being treated for cervical cancer. They leaned on me whenever they needed someone to talk to or just needed words of encouragement and I had to be there for them. Sometimes we tend to question God when something happens, something terrible goes on in life. But for me, I never once said, why me? Why me, God? I always thought, why not me? I knew I would get through it. I knew he would get me through it. My faith was strong. I have three sisters and three brothers and they all have children. And I would not want to see one of them go through what I went through. I believe that I'm stronger than all of them. And I believe that I can take on life's most vulnerable experiences. That's what I think. My mother had just completed treatment for breast cancer in June, 2016. I was diagnosed with uterine cancer in August, 2016. Imagine that. But I can honestly say I was never afraid. When friends and family would call me to uplift me, it was actually kind of opposite. They would talk to me as if something horrific had happened or something terrible was going to happen to me. And when I would hear them speak, I thought, what are they talking about? It's really not that serious. That was my attitude. If they went on and on for too long, I would change the subject. You see, I was in control of how I would feel about my situation. I had no space for negative thoughts in my orbit. When someone asked to come and visit, I am absolutely certain they were expecting to see this frail person with no eyelashes, no eyebrows, but they got the complete opposite. I put on my cute wig. I drew on my eyebrows, eyeliner, lipstick. I dressed nicely. I lost weight, but that was okay. On August 22nd, 2016, when I received that phone call, I was sitting on my sofa and I jumped up and I said, God, is my world about to change? And I said, no, emphatically. It was as if no came from someone else. And I knew at that moment what my attitude would be. I knew. You see, when you maintain a good positive attitude during a difficult time, it will make you successful and give you perspective on life problems. I chose not to give control of my feelings to other people based on what their thoughts were or what they had experienced from someone else having cancer. I, wouldn't, I was not going to allow that to dictate my, my situation or my thoughts. Negative events have a greater impact on our brains than positive ones. Psychologists refer to this as negative bias. So I refused to see what I was going through as something negative. And because of that, people would say, you have such a good attitude, you're remarkable. My mother even said to me, keep that attitude, it's important. My doctors were amazed at how I went through all of it. I never got sick from the chemotherapy. I was never burned by the radiation. I would get treatments and some days go to work if I felt well, get in my car, drive myself to work. My commute was two hours to work, but my faith kept me strong. I know it was because of my attitudes towards my situation and without hesitation, I could be there for my cousin-in-law and my close girlfriend 
who today are still going through their situation. And I know it was also because I am more powerful than my situation because the spirit of God dwells on the inside of me. So no matter what life throws at me, I'm built for this. I thank God and I am grateful for that only female physician who was on the panel in the beginning, who made those recommendations, had it not been for her, my outcome, my results could have been completely different. The doctor even said to me, if we had proceeded with the robotic surgery, we could have opened you up, not knowing the cancer was there and caused it to spread. Imagine that. But you see, ladies, we have to support each other. We have to lift each other up. We have to look out for each other, not just in the boardroom, but in the operating room, at the table, on the table. And we have to be mindful of the shortcuts we try to take in life. They may not be the best decisions. So that taught me to not focus on the destination because tomorrow is not promised, but instead take the journey with faith and endurance. Thank you.